Hey guys, I'm back with the Creality CR10 Smart Printer. And in a previous video, I did a full setup and review of this printer, and I've been printing with it for quite some time now with some pretty good results. However, lately, I did have a pretty bad nozzle jam. And that's pretty common with printers like this with a Bowden tube setup that runs right down and goes into the hot end and touches the nozzle. So I disassembled the whole hot end, I cleaned it out, cleaned the jam, was reassembling everything, but I still had the power to the printer on, so the extruder fan was running and one of my tools touched the fan blades and the fan blades exploded. So that led me on a search online for a replacement fan, which led me to look for, of course, an all metal hot end and things kind of just spiraled from there. So if you guys have been looking for an all metal hot end for the CR10 Smart, you'll know that it's not so easy to find. Even on the Micro Swiss website, there isn't an application listed specifically for the CR10 Smart. However, if you look at the CR6 SE, which is a very similar printer, you'll see in the notes on the Micro Swiss website that there's an adapter for the fan to get this thing to fit on the CR10 Smart. So it didn't seem like too bad of a job. So I picked up one of these kits and today I'm gonna to show you how we can install it. And so the first thing we're gonna do here is remove the three M3 button head cap screws that are holding on the hot end cover. And there's two in the front and one in the back. You can easily find the one in the back just by looking from the back of the machine. And once those are off, the cover will just easily pop off. With the inner parts now exposed, we're gonna remove the fan first. And there are two M3 screws holding that in place. We're not gonna be reusing these screws and we're not gonna be reusing the plastic bracket behind the fan. So once you remove those, you don't have to be too careful with them and you can just simply get rid of them uh, because later on we're gonna be using an adapter with some new screws. Now you can work your way around the hot end, removing things like the silicone sock. You can also remove the cable ties, the clip that holds in your Bowden tube and you can pull the Bowden tube out as well. After that, you can loosen the retaining screws for the heater cartridge and the thermistor, and those are found on the bottom of the heating block. So you might have to get your head under there to take a look and find those. Then on the left-hand side of the assembly, you're gonna find a strain relief bracket, and that's pinching down the two wires coming off of your heater cartridge. So you're gonna wanna carefully remove that, not damaging any wires. Sometimes the thermistor wires can get caught up in front of it, and you might have to just sort of pick that out very carefully. The thermistor wires are notoriously uh, very delicate, so you don't wanna damage those. Now you can try and slip the heater cartridge and thermistor out of the heater block. In my case, the thermistor was pretty stuck and I didn't wanna damage those wires like I just mentioned. So I went ahead and removed the two M3 screws from the strain gauge bracket that holds the hot end down. And from the opposite side of the heater block, there are through holes and you can just push them out carefully with an Allen wrench. The final thing we're gonna remove here is the Bowden tube fitting. And it is a fitting slash bracket combination and they share the same mounting bolts as the strain gauge bracket. So we're gonna simply remove those. They're just M3 button head cap screws. The one on the right hand side sometimes gets stuck on the glue there. That's part of the strain relief for the wires on the strain gauge. And so you might have to do a little bit of wiggling but eventually it'll come loose and then you can just put that strain gauge back on into the same holes. Now we can unbox the Micro Swiss bits and we're using an all metal hot end kit for the CR6 SE. And that's because right now there is currently no kit specifically available for the CR10 Smart, but it turns out the CR10 Smart and the CR6 SE are very, very similar printers. And so not surprisingly, there are a lot of interchangeable parts, the hot end being one of them. Now we can do a little pre-assembly right on the print bed of the hot end. And so we have the heater block and we have the side with the heads of the screws and set screws and we're gonna have that facing down. And so we're gonna take the heat break and we're gonna thread that into the top of the heater block. So as I'm doing this, please pay attention, close attention to the orientation of the parts. The included wrench can be used just to snug that down, doesn't have to be too tight. Then we can take the heatsink body with the set screw facing forwards and we can drop that right onto the heat brake and pay close attention again here to the orientation. So the set screw facing forward, the holes for the heater cartridge and thermistor are pointing out to the side. And then we can take the included set screw, drop that into the threaded hole and just snug it down. Again, it doesn't have to be too tight 
Later on, we're going to heat the whole assembly up and give it a final torque. But for now, it's just tight enough to hold it into place. And finally, we can take our nozzle and we can thread that into the bottom of the heater block. We can thread it in with our fingers first. And then again, using the included wrench, we can just snug it down. Again, not too tight. We'll be tightening it later when the assembly is hot. The new all metal hot end can now be fixed back onto the strain gauge bracket using the original two M3 button head cap screws. And so the holes should line up because as I had mentioned earlier, the CR10 Smart and CR6 SE can interchange some parts. Next, I'm gonna be inserting the heater cartridge and thermistor into the heater block. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to apply a little bit of thermal paste. Now I have some really good stuff here. It's a copper based thermal paste and it's from Permabond. No thermal paste comes with the hot end kit. So if you don't have any, it's probably not the end of the world. If you do have some, just make sure that the temperature rating on your thermal paste is high enough that it exceeds the maximum temperature that you'll be running your hot end. Once I have the thermal paste spread around evenly, I can insert the heater cartridge and thermistor into the heater block and I can snug down the pinch bolts for the heater cartridge and the grub screws for the thermistor and I'm not going to over tighten them, it's just going to be finger tight snug. The strain relief clip for the heater cartridge wires goes on next and if you take a close look at it there's a tabbed side and the tabbed side goes on the right hand side so closer to the whole hot end assembly and there's a cutout in the metal carriage, the X carriage that carries the whole hot end assembly, and that's where it fits into. Now you can grab the brass compression sleeve from your kit along with the fitting, and the compression sleeve should fit over top of your Bowden tube. Now in my case, I'm using this Capricorn Bowden tube, and the first brass fitting that I tried to fit would not go over top. Curiously, the second one did fit, so there obviously is some sort of tolerance in there, uh, so if the first one doesn't fit over your tube, the second one might. Try them both. The kit comes with two. Then using a 10 millimeter wrench, you can tighten down that fitting and your Bowden tube should be secure. Now we're going to temporarily get the fan up and out of the way so that we can access all the screws to tighten them down while everything is hot. Using an Allen wrench and a spare hole in the X carriage bracket, we're just going to hang that up there safely. Then we're going to turn the printer on and we're going to head into the temperature settings and we're going to set our hot end temperature for something around 240 degrees celsius with the assembly at temperature for about a minute or so you can now come in and start tightening down all of the little grub screws and pinch bolts for the heater cartridge as well as the nozzle keep in mind here that metal is a good conductor of heat and so that allen wrench will get quite hot if you let it sit on those parts long enough so keep your fingers safe and try not to touch anything because it's quite hot. If you've never done this before, also keep in mind that you're going to want to try and hold the heater block in place while you torque down the nozzle so that it doesn't twist or move too much. I'm using a set of pliers here, but an adjustable wrench will also work. Try not to damage the wires on the heater cartridge if you're doing it like I'm doing it. Be careful and don't over torque it. It doesn't need to be too tight. While we wait for the hot end to cool down, we can take a look at the fan adapter brackets. So this is the original from the Creality CR10 Smart, and this is the one from the MicroSwiss website. There's a link on their website to download it and print it. And you can clearly see that it is a different thickness, and it doesn't fit. It says it's for the CR10 Smart, but it doesn't fit. So I designed my own, and you can find the link to this part in the video description down below. All you need to do is tap the two holes at the top for some M3 threads. One other thing to keep in mind with this fan adapter bracket is that you might want to print it in something with a higher heat resistance than PLA. Now it's touching the heatsink body, but there is a fan that's constantly blowing on it, but it is also very close to the heater block. So it's hard to say how hot it might get, but if you have access to a different material, something better than PLA, then you might want to print it in that material. Now we're going to use two M3 by 10 socket head cap screws to attach the fan adapter bracket to the heatsink body. And you can see me putting those in right now. 
And then you're gonna use two M3 by 15 millimeter long socket head cap screws to attach the fan to the fan adapter bracket into those two M3 tapped holes that we just tapped. While you're doing this, make sure the two wires coming off the part cooling fan are tucked in behind the fan adapter bracket and take a look on the bottom, make sure they're not touching the heater block. Up at the top, take a look at the wires coming off of the strain gauge uh, sensor and make sure those aren't getting pinched anywhere in the assembly either. They should be up and out of the way right now. Carefully route the rest of your wires along the top of the assembly. And then what I like to do is I like to take a zip tie and use the two holes on top of the X carriage assembly, thread the zip tie through them and around the wire sheathing and create an additional sort of strain relief for that wire bundle. Then the new blue silicone heater block sock goes on next and it's a pretty tight fit between the heater block and the fan and so you might need to use one of your allen keys to stuff it up in there and get it to seat properly onto the heater block. At this point your assembly should look something like this. All of your wires should be neat and tidy. Nothing should be sticking far out that could get snagged or caught or pulled on when we go to put the fan shroud on. Finally, the fan shroud should fit easily back into place and there shouldn't really be any resistance because nothing should be in the way. The three original button head cap screws should fix the fan shroud into place and you're done. So that's it for this installation and as you guys can see, it really wasn't that bad. It was no different than a standard all metal hot end installation on a Creality CR6 SE, but of course we did it on the CR10 Smart and all we needed to do was print off that additional adapter bracket for the fan, which I showed you guys the one from the Micro Swiss website doesn't fit. So head down to the video description down below to download my version, which does fit from what you can see in this video. Now, if you guys are also looking to do a direct drive upgrade on this printer, I got that video coming out soon. So please be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next video where I do the direct drive installation.